Pokemon presents a tragedy in six words for rent starter Pokemon never train What's the matter, trainer? Struggling with Pokemon Stadium? Well, don't worry. Gen Winner Red here, along with all the staff members of the YTC Institute, here to bring you a complete guide to the rental market of Pokemon Stadium 1. This video is broken up into the following sections with relevant time codes included for your... We'll start with a mini review of Pokemon Stadium 1. There's no better time to try it out, especially since it's available now, officially, on Nintendo Switch Online, and the gameplay experience is exactly how Nintendo intended. You're gonna need this guide, okay? If you've never played a Gen 1 game, don't worry, because we're gonna give you a heat crash course on Gen 1 mechanics to get you ready to enter the stadium yourself. This is not a tier list. Why not? Oh, because 80 to 90% of the Pokemon you can use are either completely useless or so outclassed there's no point in using them. Rentals can be surprising. For example, Weedle in the mainline games is complete garbage and you should never use it. But thanks to the rental system, Weedle in Stadium is complete garbage and you should never use it. Pokemon that are bad in the main games are definitely bad here. It's mostly that Pokemon that are good are sometimes also bad. Ah! I know you can see footage of Beedrill destroying Mewtwo with a vicious, critical hit, super effective Twin Needle. But I'll let you know that th there might have been some behind the scenes tinkering to get that one to work. Now this guide is completely useless if you don't actually intend to play Pokemon Stadium. Despite the fact that I make Pokemon videos and I'm dressed up as bootleg red here, I would never recommend that you actually play a Pokemon game. I think most Pokemon games are actually pretty bad. And I'm gonna be explicit here, YouTube don't ban me. The only reason I did a rental only run of Pokemon Stadium was out of pure spite. Bad move by the way. The official Nintendo Online release of Pokemon Stadium has no support for transfer Pokemon. You could only use rentals. I fully intended to make this like a hate playthrough that would break my Gen 1 sleeper agent programming. Much to my chagrin, the game is actually amazing. It's not just nostalgia. Pokemon Stadium 1 and 2 are actually fantastic and 100% worth playing in 2023. I'm gonna use Future Sight, bad move by the way, and I'm gonna say that maybe you should even play these games in 2024! Nothing will convince you about how bad modern Pokemon is, like playing old Pokemon and seeing how good things used to be. If you're worried about it being a crusty, dusty N64 game, don't be. I think it holds up really well. It looks great for the most part, the backgrounds look completely hideous. <laughs> The animations and the Pokemon themselves, I think, look amazing. Way better than anything we get nowadays. One thing I do have to mention, because it pops up every time people talk about Stadium, the minigames. I'm gonna say it, don't take my Gen 1 or card away. The minigames in Stadium are overrated and underhated. They're okay. They're a fun distraction. You're clearly supposed to play them with your friends. They're whatever. Pokemon Stadium is good because the battle simulation part is good, okay? Don't worry about the minigames. One of the best parts about this game, and something that is sorely missing from the modern games, is the voice acting. There is an announcer who is giga hype, even if he doesn't know how to pronounce certain words like seismic. Seismic toss. He tries his best, okay? And if it's your first time playing this game, it's not your audio settings. The announcer is extremely crispy. It's just a consequence of the technology of the time. Technology is incredible, but there is a limit. The audio is extremely compressed. There's nothing you can do about it. It's nostalgic. Uh, that's definitely tropium. <laughs> Fun fact, the announcer from this game is actually a character from the anime. It's everyone's favorite character, Tracy. 
I've got a Scyther, but I think I'd rather use Meryl instead. Ugh, Tracy. This game was also released back when the Japanese market was the priority, and you can definitely tell in some moments of, I'm gonna say, charming crappiness. Because of very strict character limits, some trainer classes had to be renamed. Instead of scientist, you have lab man. And instead of technician, you have Mr. Fix. You can also see some vertically scrolling English text. Vertically scrolling text is something that's very common in Japan and not strange at all. I have never seen vertically scrolling English text in my entire life, except in Pokemon Stadium. <laughs> In terms of difficulty, this game is broken into two segments. There's round one, and then once you beat that, you advance into round two, which is sort of just a new game plus. I think round one is really well balanced for rentals. At the beginning, it's super easy. You can do whatever you want. You can use Onyx and still win. Then near the end of round one, I think the difficulty really hits the sweet spot where you have to actually be kind of serious but it's still very much jank versus jank. The AI will do some very unexpected things because the sets they're using are very, very uh, creative, I guess we'll say. <laughs> Round two is when the difficulty gets out of control. You are definitely intended to play this game using your own Pokemon. The rentals are ass. <laughs> They're extremely bad, their stats are terrible, and not a single one, I, I think I can say that, has an optimal moveset. In round two, you really start to feel that. Enemies just have way better stats than you, they have way better moves, and it starts to get to the point where I would describe it as unfun. You can beat round two with rentals. It is possible, but people also win the lottery, okay? Just as an example, Rod St. Fisher, the final boss of the Pika Cup in round two, even if you know exactly what to do and you bring counter picks to him specifically, considering the enemy crit rate against you and the fact that you have to fish, fittingly enough, for freezes against him, you have like a single digit percent chance of winning. It is the most difficult boss I've faced recently and I just beat Sekiro, okay? You can win, I did, but it's basically gambling. I, I don't think it's very fun at all. Straight from Oak's lab, we're gonna run you through all of the Gen 1 mechanics you need to know to succeed in the stadium. Gen 1 is completely bonkers. It is so different from the modern games that it, it doesn't feel outdated because it's just in its own dimension. Something that might blow your mind, you, you take a lot of recoil from this. I think that Gen 2, is actually closer to Gen 9 than it is to Gen 1. I think it makes sense to work backwards and start by talking about what's not in Gen 1. So first and most obviously, over 750 Pokemon that you know and maybe love are not in the game. It only has Gen 1 Pokemon. Most relevant for this game, a lot of Gen 1 evolutionary lines weren't even evolutionary lines in Gen 1, they were completed later. There's so many missing evolutions that I'm just gonna put them on screen. Here they are. Can't use them because they don't exist in this game. And it's also missing beloved powerhouse Prevos like Eaglybuff, Magby, Elekid, Smoochum. How are we gonna win without them? The type chart was a bit different back in the day. Fairy types, steel types, and dark types <laughs> did not exist at all. And that also means that Magnemite was not a steel type. You might be asking yourself, well, without steel or dark, how do you counter psychic types? You don't. At least there's ghosts. Ghost being super effective against psychic. In every gen except one where, due to an error, psychic is actually immune to ghost. Not that that would even matter because the only ghost move that doesn't do set damage is lick. Fire does not yet resist ice, more on how much fire sucks later. Bug and poison were also mutually super effective against each other, which is not how it works nowadays. This doesn't actually matter because, as we'll find out, I don't actually recommend that you use a single bug or poison move throughout the entire game! Many type-based perks don't actually exist yet. Fire types are immune to burn, ice types are immune to freeze, but electric types are not immune to paralysis, 
and poison types can still miss with toxic. Grass types are not yet immune to powder moves, so grass types can still be affected by sleep powder, stun spore, and spore. Ghosts don't have trapping immunity, but that doesn't really matter because there are no trapping moves. Asterisk. I, I don't know if it's a bug, but I mean it probably is. In Gen 1, you're actually immune to status inflicted by the secondary effects of moves of the same type. It's much easier to understand with an example. Electric types can be paralyzed by Thunder Wave, but an electric type will never be paralyzed by the secondary paralysis chance of Thunder or Thunder Bolt. And likewise, normal types will never be paralyzed by the paralysis chance of Body Slam. Very weird, but keep that in mind in case you ever try fishing for status. It's apparently intended. And then in Gen 3, they intentionally changed this. Held items! Gone! Abilities! Gone! Natures! Gone! Gender? Gone! Get woke? Go bro! EVs! Gone? Well, they're kinda in the game. Instead of EVs and IVs, there's a system called Stat Experience and DVs. All you need to know about these systems is that you have barely any, and the enemy has a lot more than you, so your stats suck and the enemies don't. There's no multi-battles of any sort in this game, not even double battles, so 1v1 me bro. The physical special split did not yet happen. In Gen 4 and beyond, whether a move is physical or special actually depends on the move. So for example, Fire Punch is physical, Fire Blast is special. In Gens 1 to 3, that's actually determined by the type of the move itself. You can see those types on screen now. All rock moves are physical, all water moves are special, and all ghost moves are physical. Lick em. The special split had not yet happened. Didn't I just say that? No, this is actually a different special split. In Gen 1, special was just one stat. Your special attack and your special defense, they were the same. What this mostly means is that specially inclined Pokemon are really good. <laughs> what type tends to be specially inclined? Psychic! Crits in Gen 1 work very differently. If you're a Swordmaster <laughs> gamer, you're gonna love Gen 1 because everything is critting all day. Crits are actually tied to your base speed stat. The faster you are, the more crits you get. The calculation in Stadium is a bit different than it is in the actual cartridge, but it still ends up being really high. Unless you're Snorlax, your crit rate is probably gonna be higher in Gen 1 than it would be in Gens 2 to 9. The fastest Pokemon like Jolteon, Aerodactyl, and Electrode have insanely high crit rates. Electrode's crit rate is 27%. Sound familiar? You have to keep this in mind because the enemy is not just getting lucky. Crit rates are way higher. You have to account for that in your strategies. This is also pre-gen 6 crit nerf, so critical hits deal double damage. In modern games, crits will only benefit you. They won't ignore your positive stat boosts, but in gen 1, they actually do. So if you swords dance and then crit, you deal normal damage. Crits also ignore enemy defense drops, but I don't know why you're dropping the enemy's defense. Don't worry about that. High crit moves are extremely good in Generation 1. I'm talking about Slash. I'm talking about Karate Chop. I'm talking about Razor Leaf. I'm talking about Crab Hammer. Because they always crit. I think there's like a chance that they don't crit if you're like super slow. They crit, okay? You can just assume that they do. They fixed the focus energy bug. In the cartridges, focus energy actually cut your crit rate down to a quarter, but in Stadium it actually works and it boosts your crit rate. I would never recommend that you actually use focus energy, but the enemy might. So if the enemy focuses, they're about to crit you, but you probably killed them while they were wasting their turn. In terms of the moves you can use, obviously there's only Gen 1 moves. There's a Gen 1 moves tier list if you want to hear in-depth explanations about how all of the moves work, but we're just going to mention a few that are really important. A couple are actually type shifted compared to what they are in the normal game, so Bite is actually a normal type move, Gust is actually a normal type move, and Karate Chop is a normal type move. Not that you would ever use any of these moves anyway. Hyper Beam is actually really good in the cartridge because if you KO an enemy, you don't have to recharge. That's actually a glitch, and in this game, no matter what, you have to recharge, so Hyper Beam sucks. 
Substitute does pretty much nothing in cartridge, but it actually works in the stadium, so you might actually consider using Substitute. It's almost the same as it is in modern games, just block status. Very, very useful. Substitute also blocks draining moves for some reason, so Mega Drain will just whiff against Substitute. Blizzard is ridiculous and it's not even in its final or rather its first form the og blizzard was 90 accuracy 30 percent freeze chance and freeze in gen 1 is super oko you are actually worse than dead because you never thaw out and you're just stuck there as your opponent does whatever they want in stadium it's not 30 percent freeze chance it's only a 10 percent chance to insta kill oh no and it keeps the 90% accuracy. So if you're wondering why your opponent hits you with so many blizzards, it's because it's 90% accurate. Fire Blast has a 30% burn chance for some reason? I mean, I won't complain. <laughs> Rock Slide exists, but it has no flinch chance. Not that you'd be going first with Rock Slide Pokemon anyway. Dig this! Dig is actually pretty good in this game. It's 100 base power, and the special interaction between Dig and Earthquake, where the Digger takes double damage, that only got added in Gen 2, so it's actually totally safe to dig against Earthquake. Obviously, you would rather just use Earthquake, because it's my damage and I want it now, but some Pokemon don't have the option, in which case, Dig is perfectly fine. If you don't want to play the game and you just want to win immediately against any foe, you can always use Toxic Leech Seed. Lab Man cooked it up for us. For whatever reason, Leech Seed actually increments the Toxic Counter, so they both stack up and deal lethal damage instantly according to YouTube comments, but it actually takes three turns. This is not a serious recommendation, don't do this, it's a waste of time. Sleep. Sleep in Gen 1 is pretty brutal, but it's less brutal in Stadium. In Gen 1, the turn you wake up, you actually can't act. You lose your turn. But Sleep in Stadium actually can last zero turns. So it's possible that you just waste your turn by sleeping the opponent, but you're still neutral on turns. Sleep goes from zero to three turns. It'll usually give you an advantage, but not as much of an advantage as you'd get in the cartridges, where I believe it is one to seven turns, which is just dumb. And people crying about Smogon for their rules, Sleep Claws, the rule that you can only have one Pokemon slept at a time, came from this game. It's official, okay? Psychic is completely busted. Well, I said that already? I was talking about the type. This time I'm talking about the move. In addition to being the best stab move on all of the best Pokemon, and it's pretty much unresisted in Gen 1 except by other Psychic types, it has a 30% chance to drop Special. Not just Special Defense, because remember, Special is one stat. So very, very often, the winning strategy is going to be to Psychic your opponent and fish for Special Drops. And finally, Gen 1 Rap Mechanics. We'll talk more about this later, but... It's been 24 years, and the attack continues. You ready to explore the rental market? There's a couple different formats in this game, and movesets actually differ by format. We're gonna try and do a holistic view of the rental Pokemon, so if they're good in one format in particular, we'll recommend them, but it's even better if they're good in multiple formats. One of the interesting things about rentals is that one of the ways they try to balance them is that pre-evolutions tend to have worse stats, but better moves than fully evolved Pokemon. And pre-evolutions actually are given additional DVs and stat experience in order to buff up their stats a bit compared to their final evolutions. For the most part, final evolutions are still the best, with some exceptions. Speaking of the best, let's talk about Pokemon that are definitely not the best. Looks like a bad Pokemon choice. These are Pokemon you would expect to be very good based on the Gen 1 meta, but due to the rental economy, I would actually describe these guys as a uh, trap inch. It's not in Gen 1. I would describe them as an arena trap. It's also not in Gen 1. Don't use these guys, okay? That's what I'm saying. Who will be the first to fall? Before I reveal the answer, let me tell you, no king rules forever, my son. It's not actually Needle King. Have you heard the tragedy? 
of Darth Tauros the Hyper. It's not a tale a Gen 1 would tell you. Yeah, Tauros is really bad in this game. It could save others from bad move pools, but not itself. It's got bites! <laughs> you mess with the bull, you don't even get the horns. It doesn't have horn drill, not that you use that anyway. Tauros is really good in actual Gen 1 because you can get Body Slam, you have Hyper Beam with no recharge if you actually get the kill, you can Earthquake, you can Blizzard. With these movesets, I don't know, man. In some formats, it actually has Double Edge, but Double Edge is only 100 BP in this generation. You can use Bide to hit Ghosts if you don't want to use Fire Blast. We're really reaching here. I definitely describe this moveset as bull. Ooh. Two spoons! I guess I can actually hold two spoons, right? TWO SPOONS! It turns out that dual wielding is not always better. I don't want the mischance, okay? Spoony Bard. Can I get a better move than Psybeam, please? No, you can't, so... Alakazam, unfortunately. Not the worst thing ever, but it's outclassed by two-handed builds. Talk about that later. Alakazam, more like Alakasham! Ha <laughs> ha! You might remember Snorlax from your nightmares if you ever played Gen 2. In Gen 2, Snorlax is an unkillable <laughs> god. It's the one using curse, but you're also gonna be swearing. Pretty much everything that makes Snorlax amazing doesn't exist in Gen 1. It's super good special defense does not yet exist, it just has very bad special. Curse, doesn't exist. Rest talk, doesn't exist. So you just get a very slow, decently beefy normal type. That's what? using Bide. No thanks. I should be clear, Snorlax is still good in Gen 1, just not in this game. The price of eggs has risen sharply in recent times. Chansey was actually incredibly powerful in Gen 1, because remember, without the special split, not only does Chansey take hits, it dishes them out too. Not with this moveset. This is probably the worst rental moveset that it has. Other ones actually do have, like, Thunderbolt and Ice Spew, in which case, it's, it's like, kind of okay, but none of the movesets actually have soft-boiled. <laughs> the way that Chansey wins is usually by outlasting the enemy, and if you can't heal, you can't really do that. If you're in a format that has Chansey with special attacks, it can be brought, but don't expect it to be the full stop to special attackers that it is in the actual games. Not without being able to eat its own eggs. I don't have any eggs to put in my mouth. Dragonite has a colossal 600 BST. And these moves. Outrage obviously did not exist yet, so don't expect to be going on a rampage. Rap can be okay, but there's better rappers than Dragonite, okay? Don't let this guy near the mic. Okay, I was gonna say Cloyster was bad, but I don't know. I mean, this looks pretty good to me. This is as good as its moveset gets, though. If you try to use this thing in Poke Cup or Gym Leader Castle, it is way, way worse. Cluster is super, super good in actual Gen 1 because before the special split, it actually didn't just melt the special attacks. This is back when Ice was actually kind of good. So I'm actually not considering Cloyster a trap, despite the fact that it traps you with Clamp. But it's not a superstar, and if I include Cloyster, I can also include this thumbnail about another rental video. Featuring Cloyster. Tor. Executor in Gen 1 is amazing. Before the special split, this thing had colossal special attack and defense, and also very respectable physical bulk. Executor was very hard to take down. It could do a ton of things. It could spread sleep, 75% accurate sleep powder. It could inflict stun spore on those you couldn't sleep. You could devastate things with an insanely powerful Psychic. And as a last resort, you could explode. Explosion in Gen 1 was very good. It calculated the opponent's defense as if it was halved. And with Executor's actually very reasonable attack stat, you could do big damage on the way out. You're not gonna do any of those things with these movesets. Hope you like 40 base power Mega Drain. Take it from someone who did an entire Egg Moves Only run of Gen 1. Egg Bomb sucks. 
the champ, is standing in for the entire fighting type because the entire fighting type is complete garbage. Nowadays, fighting is so good they had to introduce a type to nerf it. Back in the day, they were still in their training arc, okay? Fighting is god awful. There is not a single good fighting move in the game. The highest power move is submission. 80 base power, 80 accuracy with recoil. The champ doesn't even get it. Sad. Do not bother with fighting types in this game. Mind over matter, okay? Aerodactyl! Awesome Pokemon! And Charmeleon evolved just to fight him. I know how I'll defeat Aerodactyl by gaining a quadruple weakness to rock. Charizard actually knew what he was doing because Gen 1 Aerodactyl is so sad. No rock slide, no earthquake. Do not pick Aerodactyl. <laughs> Even though it's got an amazing speed stat and sick crits, you can't actually do anything, there's no moves. Now, Aerodactyl does eventually gain Stone Edge and Earthquake in the modern games, but yeah, Gen 1, it's really bad. I'm sure one day it'll be able to take advantage of Rockhead with Head Smash and Brave Bird, right? M Masada, are you listening? Is he still direct the games? You like Solar Beam? Don't use Venusaur. You like Hydro Pump? I mean, I guess you can use Blastoise, but I'm not gonna say it's good. Just, it's got a sick Hydro Pump animation though, so actually you should use this. And the last Pokemon I would not recommend is Charizard. Charizard's actually a stand-in for all of the starters. They're all bad, but it's also the stand-in for every fire type. Fire in the modern games is actually very good, and that's because fire got a huge buff in Gen 2, called the Steel type. Fire has gained three resistances since Gen 1. It gained an ice resistance, gained a fair resistance, gained a steel resistance. And the fact that fire melts steel is super important. In Gen 1, fire really only deals with bug types who are all terrible and grass types who are almost <laughs> all terrible. There's really no reason to ever bring a fire type, especially because enemy water types are very frequent and very dangerous. Extra sad news for Charizard bros, Charizard is one of the only special attackers that was actually buffed by the special split. Almost every other special attacker ends up getting nerfed because their special defense gets dropped, but Charizard actually had their special attack increased, and their special defense stayed the same. So yeah, extra bad in Gen 1. Now that we've disabled all the traps, what Pokemon should you actually use in this game? Well, our recommendations begin with... Jinx! You owe me a soda! A cold soda, it's a nice type. Jinx is the best rental Pokemon in the game? I don't really think that's much of a contest. Not only is Jinx good, it is very consistently good. In pretty much every format where Jinx is available, you should just auto-pick it. Three of its moves are almost always the same. It always has Ice Punch, I wish it was Blizzard, Psychic K, hey, that's as good as it gets, and Lovely Kiss can have some very good utility, even with the nerfed Stadium 1 sleep mechanics. Its fourth move is almost always useless, but as we'll soon find out, three good moves is two more than most good Pokemon get. Psychic Typing and the actual move Psychic, both incredibly useful. Fishing for special drops is a huge part of winning, if you can't win by getting special drops, you can maybe win by fishing for freezes with Ice Punch. So Jinx has two different ways to win, on top of just having really good stats. Decent enough speed to go first most of the time, decent enough special to deal a ton of damage and also survive incoming special hits. Physical bulk is very bad, so you have to be careful. <laughs> if you're ever at an impasse, not quite sure what to do, it's probably a good idea to bring Jinx. I don't think it's ever a mistake. I, I don't think I've said it yet, but don't be afraid of the ice typing. We think of ice typing now as just a disaster, <laughs> it's sort of a death sentence. But back in Gen 1, it was actually very good. I think it's part of the reason why it was in the Elite Four. It was actually considered a high tier endgame typing. Just like fighting, right? <laughs> Ride right on. Why don't you ride on these good stats? Rhydon is the premier physical Pokemon in this game. 
amazing HP, amazing defense, amazing attack. It can 1v1 almost any other physical Pokemon in the game. It actually combos very well with Jinx, because Jinx struggles sometimes with faster electric types. Rhydon insta-wins against every single electric type in the game. They cannot do anything to him. So if you see electric types on the enemy team, bring Rhydon. Congratulations. <laughs> Free victories! All of this is despite Rhydon having basically one move? <laughs> and we spent the entire last tier list complaining about two move, right? Rhydon will almost always attack with either Dig or Earthquake. Earthquake is better, but Dig at least has 100 base power in Gen 1. Rhyhorn and Graveler actually do get Rock Slide and Earthquake, but Rhydon's stats are so much better that you should still just go with Rhydon. Rhydon just has a ton of utility, both as a pivot, you can go to him when you're scared Jigs can't take the hit, Rhydon almost certainly can, and a full health Rhydon can 1v1 almost anyone. As long as they're not a water or grass type, or an ice type. So really he can't 1v1 almost anyone, but he 1v1s physical attackers, okay? Right on special is obviously complete garbage, so it, it dies instantly to special attacks, and it doesn't actually deal much damage with these weird special moves they slap on it, but it doesn't deal zero damage. You can actually use them against opposing rock ground types and flying types that you can't hit because you don't have rock slide. They do actually see some use, it's not a complete joke. Rhydon's rock typing also makes it a very good switch in against most normal types. You can usually safely switch in as, as long as they don't whip out their bubble beam. Rhydon, it's number one in our hearts, just like it's number one in the Pokedex, right? It's the first Pokemon, the debate will never end. Very important to note, Rhydon is ground rock instead of that fraud golem who is Rock Ground. Golem is pretty much interchangeable with Rhydon, I just think Rhydon's a bit better. Instead of dual wielding, you should go with a two-handed spec, Kadabra. The trade evolutions are actually kind of unique in that their stats are not that much different than their final evolutions. So Kadabra actually has very, very competitive stats with Alakazam, except it actually has a good psychic move, Psychic. I don't really have much else to say about Kadabra, it's really fast, it's got really great special, Psychic is the best type, and Psychic is the best move. You really can't go wrong with Kadabra. Recover is not totally useless on Kadabra because remember, special is one stat, which means that even though Kadabra has pathetic HP, it actually has really good special defense, so you actually can take special hits. Might actually be able to use Recover. I'm definitely in the pocket of Big Spoon because I'm gonna say that you can even use Counter. Because Kadabra is so frail, it'll take a ton of damage, which means it returns a lot of damage with counter. Don't use counter in Gen 1, it only works on normal and fighting moves. Electrode. I don't know if that's how it sounds in the anime. Electrode is probably the Pokemon that most surprised me. So Electrode is the fastest Pokemon in the game at 140 base speed. It will almost always go first, not accounting for static speed difference. The most important part of Electrode is not actually its attacks, it's the status move it has. Thunder Wave is very, very useful. There are some enemies that have one very dangerous Pokemon, so Electrode's ability to guaranteed outspeed them and paralyze them is super useful. It's also just lots of flying Pokemon and water type Pokemon that can get zapped by Thunder. I mean, you'll miss 30% of the time, but you'll hit 70% of the time. Although Electrode's special is not that great, it does have the highest speed in the game, so you're actually gonna be critting up a storm. You have almost as much chance to crit as you do to miss with Thunder. That's kinda crazy. Zappy! Numero uno, Articuno. This cover is terrible. It's literally just two PNGs. They're in static poses. Articuno is really good. 125 special. That's both on offense and defense, that's great. Strongest ice beam in the game, I think, at least for rentals. Really wish it had Blizzard, but I guess a 95 base power, 100 accuracy stab move with a 10% chance to super one hit kill, that'll just have to do. I'm not gonna say that Sky Attack is good. <laughs> I would much rather have Drill Peck, but there actually are occasions where you might wanna use Sky Attack and you're not just playing around. 
You might also consider counting to two. Zapdos is also very good for most of the same reasons that Articuno is. I don't know if you'd count to three, though. I'm not gonna say Moltres is bad, but it's definitely the worst of the birds. At least it's better than Charizard. It's kind of painful to say. Ooh, it's a ghost! Don't call an exorcist, okay? You want these ghosts on your team. Haunter and Gengar. Both have their uses. I guess they're ghost and poison types? They're not gonna be using ghost or poison moves, I'll tell you that. As a trade evolution, Haunter's stats are actually quite close to Gengar's, and Haunter's moves are usually so much better that Haunter is preferred. But there are times when you really only care about, like, Thunderbolt, and Gengar happens to get it, in which case, yeah, you would use Gengar. They're both really fast with really, really good special, and the ghost typing is amazing. You are immune to so many things in Generation 1. Including rap. More on that later. You're mostly just going to be using a grab bag of non-stab special attacks, but hey, it works. Welcome to Gen 1. Now we have two recommendations for one very specific format. The Petted Cup! I know it's petite. This is a very strange format. It is not the little cup you know of today. In Petite Cup, the Pokemon have to literally be physically small. Tiny enemy crab. Attacks your weak point for massive damage. Have you ever seen Krabby's stats? Here they are. I don't know why they're so high for an unevolved Pokemon, but they are. <laughs> so even using non-stab strength, you are going to be shredding the enemy. Pick Krabby in Petite Cup, okay? Dratini. I'm not endorsing this strategy, but this is a guide on how to win. If you want to win, this is one of the ways you can do it. Thunder wave them, and then start rapping. <laughs> I wouldn't do this myself, but... A real shinobi knows the difference between victory and honor. I think I said there would be two Petite Cup recommendations. I lied. There's actually three! Digla Dig! And it stops there because it's actually not Doug Trio. Super, super fast, pretty suspicious attack, but when you have a hundred base power stab dig and the rock slide for coverage, that's actually really, really useful. I can dig it. We're now moving on to Niche no Kuni. These are Pokemon I sometimes recommend. They can have their uses and they do some things that the staples sometimes fail to do. Wow, it's my favorite underrated franchise, Prince of Persian. I've never played one of those games. Persian is known for one thing in Gen 1, and that is super fast auto crit slash. It only has that in Poke Cup in rentals, but you should definitely use Persian in Poke Cup. Persian's attack is kind of bad, but with stab auto crit slash, it actually does a shocking amount of damage. It's also an excellent check for frail psychic types. Because psychic types have such colossal special, it's really hard to break through them with neutral special attacks, and there are no super effective special attacks. So slashing them is one of the ways to do it. We're actually gonna use double cut here. I can, I can actually get knives. We're actually gonna use double cut here. Reckless streamer plays with knives and cosplays as Scyther. Ow, the edge. Oh man, plus two attack! Ugh. In formats where Persian is not available with Slash, you can get Scyther with Slash. Persian is better because Persian is faster and gets stab on the Slash, but Scyther is also plenty fast and even non-stab Slash shreds things, especially because Scyther actually has better base attack. What, what do we say? We need like something edgy. The hash slinging, the Slash, the, the Slash... <laughs> The Ash-slinging Slasher! A wing attack has 40 base power in Gen 1, by the way, don't use it. Now, we're gonna take a dip into the C tier here. We're gonna talk about three water types, because they're all kind of related, but they fulfill different roles. I don't know if I'm gonna give Starmie five stars. Maybe four, maybe three. <laughs> So Starmie has a ton of potential, none of which will be given in this game. It gets great moves, and in this game, they give you, like, Surf. 
Water Psychic typing is really good. Wish I actually got the move Psychic. Wish I actually got the move Blizzard. Wish I got the move Thunderbolt, but you can sometimes do things with just Surf and hey, Thunder sometimes hits. Best quality of Starmie is its speed. It is very fast, and you do want to be fast. There's a ton of advantages that come with that, including the great crit rate in this gen. Speaking of fast, Slowbro is not fast. It is obviously very slow. It does warn you in the name. It usually has Surf and Psychic, both great moves, and Slowbro, I mean, it's kind of thick. It actually can take a hit, multiple hits often. Unfortunately, being slow is a very, very real downside, especially in Gen 1 where there's all sorts of cheese. Being slow means that you can get crit, you can get status, you can get wrapped. Tons of horrible, horrible fates can befall you if you move second, which is the main disadvantage of slow, bro, and why I can't just recommend bro culture to you. Lapras, for the most part, is... I'm not gonna say dollar store Articuno, it's like second-hand Articuno. Articuno is overall better, but Lapras's Ice Beam is perfectly fine, and the main reason you would use Lapras is because it does get Stab, not Surf, Bubble Beam, which is overall, I think, more useful than Sky Attack. Lapras isn't bad, and if you want to go Super Freeze Cheese, just use Lapras and Articuno. And Jinx, and just spam your 10% chance to win. That ol' Rhydon's no match for the king! Now, Rhydon's overall much better than Nidoking, but Nidoking is faster and it does have Stab Earthquake, so there are actually times where you would bring Nidoking for the speed advantage. Not many occasions, though. I'm mostly just putting this here because I really like Nidoking, okay? Onyx has actually got great moves. Earthquake, Rock Slide, Explosion? Wow. Attack 70. Don't use Onyx unless you're intending to meme. But hey, it's too big for the Hall of Fame. It clips through the wall. But it's not too big for Smash because it is actually in the Pokefloat state. <laughs> Onyx, accessible to the masses. Who are you? I'm you, but weaker. <laughs> if you've played this game, then you know exactly why Ditto is on here. The final, final boss is Mewtwo. It's a 6v1, which you can still lose. Mewtwo is that strong. But hey, you can become Knockoff Mewtwo with Ditto. Knockoff is not in this game, though. Knockoff would probably actually beat Mewtwo. Question for anybody who has an uncle that works at Nintendo. Why did they give Ditto 79 attack when its other stats are 80? Somebody answer? Sakurai? Sakurai, are you watching this? I know you have a YouTube channel. Please answer me. People keep asking about Raichu. I think Raichu is almost entirely outclassed by Electrode, but there is a format, Pika Cup, fittingly enough, not even Rai Cup, where Electrode is unavailable, but Raichu is, in which case, yeah, you would use Raichu. It's about the only time you would. Now, Eevee existed in Gen 1, which means that since the very beginning, people have never, ever, 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 ever shut up about their favorite Eeveelution. I'm sick of it. I hate the Eeveelutions. They're all filthy pure types outclassed by something at some point. Sorry, I don't want to make the actual Eevee fans too upset. <laughs> I personally am just very tired of hearing about Eevee. As you can imagine, because I, I do see everybody's comments, Eevee and the Eeveelutions very disproportionately gets mentioned. Like, $2 donation from level 5 Vaporeon, my heart hurts. Sorry. I'm sick of hearing about Eevee. Hold it! Hey, post production imported cheese here. I'm not totally heartless. There is an Eeveelution I do like. The mighty Patreons, all of whom you can see on screen now. To evolve into Patreon, all you need is your mom's credit card number and the three digits on the back. Consider evolving today to help support premium content like this. <laughs> Jolteon's okay. It's definitely the best evolution in this game. It's actually got very good special, very, very good speed at 130 base. You can see that it has Pin Missile, which is one of the only ways to deal reliable, super effective damage against Mewtwo. 
Jolteon actually is unironically pretty good against Mewtwo because one of the two strategies you can use against Mewtwo is accuracy cheesing. And Jolteon has a very fast sand attack and decent enough special to actually take a hit from Mewtwo. Diggle dig, diggle dig, dig. Trio, trio, trio. We can actually talk about Doug Trio this time. It's very, very fast, which means tons of crits. 100 base power dig is okay. In some formats, it has rock slide, which is nice. The main issue is that this is before the base attack buff. Nowadays, Doug Trio has 100 base attack, which is not good, but it's okay. But back then, it only had 80 base attack, so you are relying on crits, which you can get fairly frequently, but not always. I say be careful when using Doug Trio, but it is an option for lightning fast ground type offense, which can be useful. Once you get the Ashina Arts Tree, you can learn Rising Carp! And once you use Rising Carp, you can evolve into Gyarados! I'm not gonna say Gyarados is good or bad in this game. Before the special split, it actually had 100 special attacks, so this weird special set isn't actually that bad, but I wouldn't exactly call it good. You can use Gyarados, but I wouldn't. And that is it for recommended rentals. If I didn't mention a Pokemon, it's because they're trash! Or outclassed by one of the ones I did actually recommend. Now it's time for enemy phase. These are perilous enemies that you need to watch out for in your playthrough. Starting with the most obnoxious enemy in the entire game, Krulet. Now I know that rent a cruel here doesn't look that dangerous, and that is because it is missing <laughs> the key component of the pain, rap. We said we we're going to talk about Gen One rap. Your parents were right, okay? Rap must be stopped at any cost. The way that rap and bind work in Gen 1 is that they don't really do any damage, they do a little bit of damage, but they prevent the wrapped target from acting. At all. Wrap and bind are the main ones you have to watch out for. Wrap is 85 accurate, bind is 75 accurate. There's also fire spin and clamp, but they're much more rare. If the opponent outspeeds you and keeps hitting you with a wrapping move, you are helpless. You just have to sit there and take it for about the 10 to 15 minutes that it takes for you to die. It is horrible, and it is a large part of the reason why you need a fast Thunder Waver like Electrode, because that is how you can shut down the strategy. Just paralyze them, and they can no longer wrap you. The only other bit of counterplay you have is kind of counterintuitive. So nowadays, wrapping moves actually trap you and prevent you from switching, although you can still act. It's sort of the opposite in Gen 1. Although you can't act, you can actually switch, and you definitely should. Because if you switch after being wrapped, the opponent loses their turn. They don't actually hit you on the switch out. So you should switch, at which point you'll probably just get wrapped again. But hey, there's a chance they could miss. <laughs> Tentacruel in particular is a very dangerous wrapper because it has 100 base speed, which is very good for Gen 1. It also has insane special. 120 base special is very good, which means that you probably are not going to be taking it out in one Thunder or Psychic. And you're not going to be using Earthquake on it because it is a water type. It's just going to kill you with a Bubble Beam or a Surf on any Pokemon that could actually Earthquake it. In Pika Cup, this thing is level 20 while your rentals are capped at level 15, and the stat gulf is immense. It is super unfair and unfun. But you can win, so quit complaining, I guess. Ugh. Hesitation is defeat. Speaking of level 20 Pokemon, Alakazam. Alakazam is on the team of the final boss of round 2 Pika Cup, Rod St. Fisher. This has to be one of the most difficult battles in the entire franchise. Am I fighting Alakazam or Vanilla Cthoon? How are you supposed to beat this thing? I, I actually don't think you can. Pretty much the only way to beat Alakazam in Pika Cup is to freeze it. That's about it. And Alakazam has a massive chance to crit you before you can even get your one roll at freezing him. He has more of a chance to crit you than you do to freeze him. Super duper unfair and unfun. You just have to get lucky. Enemy Alakazam actually specced into dual wield. You have no shot. <laughs> ah! 
also featured on Rod St. Fisher's team is a level 20 Dragonair. You will only ever face either the Dragonair or the Alakazam, so that's good news. The bad news is that either of them can solo your entire team. Dragonair's got only one tentacle, but it's definitely got the cruelty. You will get wrapped. Or ice beamed. Or dragon rage. Lots of ways it can kill you, and pretty much nothing you can do about it. You can paralyze it, and then it's a 2 -a KO with Ice Beam? Vicious Pokemon. Very hard to deal with. Oh, poor baby. This one's less of a threat and more of a jump scare. <laughs> but Lieutenant Surge is Raichu has Surf. As long as you know that it's gonna happen, it, it's actually not that dangerous, but just be aware of Lieutenant Surge's special amphibious training, okay? The legendary birds are very good when they're on your side, but they're even stronger as enemy units when they have actual movesets. There is specifically a bird boy uh, in the Prime Cup that actually has all three of the legendary birds on his team. They're all extremely scary. Zapdos can be dealt with by Rhydon, just cannot touch Rhydon, so even if your best move against it is like strength, you'll still win. Moltres you can fight with Electrode or your own Articuno. Remember that fire does not actually resist ice yet, so Articuno actually does fine against Moltres. Rhydon does not do fine. Rhydon's special is so bad that it actually gets toasted by Fire Blast, and you don't have Rock Slide to fight back with. Moltres is pretty scary. Articuno is probably the scariest, especially because its Ice Beam can super kill you. You need to watch out for that. Best counter is probably Lapras. Lapras does quad resist their Ice Beam and cannot be frozen. And Articuno doesn't resist your Ice Beam, so you'll probably win in the end, but Articuno has real high stats, it's kinda shaky. The final trainer of Master Ball in Prime Cup. Whipped out the action replay because he has got a Mew. Not with this set, his is actually even better. It's got Psychic, it's got Thunder Wave, it's got a hundred in all of its base stats, which for Gen 1 is actually very good. Mew is very hard to deal with. You can freeze it, that works for anything in this game that's not nice type. You can paralyze and wrap cheese it, that's one way around it. But in terms of a straight up 1v1 fight, you probably cannot win. Especially because it's gonna be hitting you with special drops through Psychic. Why are Poketubers not called Mewtubers? Good question. As you can see here, it's not randomly missing one attack point like Ditto. So the Ditto theorists, you've clearly been disproven. Back to the lab with your crackpot theories. Each route is capped off by a battle against Super Boss Mewtwo. It is a 6v1 in your favor. Don't get too cocky because Mewtwo is extremely strong. Forget about a fair fight because you cannot win one. Mewtwo is vicious. Mewtwo doesn't have infinite PP, but it does have PP maxes applied, so it has plenty of PP when it comes to wiping out your whole team. Its moveset actually changes between round one and round two. In round one, it has Blizzard, Thunderbolt, Psychic, and Rest. In round two, it swaps out the Blizzard for Amnesia. Amnesia in Gen 1 is like using Calm Mind twice. Good luck. Round two, Mewtwo also has maxed out stats, which means that not even Electrode is outspeeding it. It's pretty much impossible to beat round two Mewtwo in an honest fight, but hey, you're probably not gonna reach round two Mewtwo with rentals anyway, so you don't have to worry about it. If I can't reach it, it doesn't exist, okay? And it's not a skill issue because you can't even import your own Pokemon, okay? I'll just blame the game. Pretty much the only way to win is through Giga Cheese strats, so let's go over those. The first one is through gratuitous use of Pocket Sand. Send out Electrode, Thunder Wave it, and then you can use Flash with Electrode, you can use Sand Attack with Jolteon. Just drop its accuracy. Then just try and go ham on it with strong physical attackers and hope that it misses you, because if it hits, you probably gonna die. One of the most reliable ways to beat Mewtwo is, ironically enough, to just rely on chance. My recommended strategy is just to super freeze cheese it. There's no battles before Mewtwo, and if you lose, you can just immediately rebattle. So I suggest you just load up on Ice Beamers, Ice Punchers, and just fish for the 10% chance to freeze. As soon as you freeze, you win. He will never thaw out. So just do that over and over until you win. Shouldn't take too long. If you want to be a rambling gaming dude. Another way you could cheese it is to paralyze. 
and then to just spam one hit KO moves because Mewtwo is not actually immune to one hit KO moves like Horn Drill or Fissure. But you do have to paralyze because one quirk of Gen 1 Oko moves is that you have to actually be faster than the opponent. And Mewtwo is really fast, so you have to paralyze. Sea King? Horn Drill. I think Mewtwo has Thunderbolt. Drilled? No. Oh. Yeah, goodbye, Sea King. <laughs> yes! It's got kind of a sad fainting animation, it just goes belly up. Oh. Lightning Rod? <laughs> wow! Time to put Sea King in niche? Ah, we missed. After further research from the YTC Institute, we've determined that Sea King can actually survive a Thunderbolt from Mewtwo. And hey, Mewtwo's not immune to one-hit kill moves, so you can drill him. <laughs> this is not a recommended strategy. Labman and the rest of the YTC Institute did do some field research on whether or not you can use Toxic Leech Seed against Mewtwo. Uh, you can with an asterisk. I'm not endorsing this, I, I don't think this is actually a good way to win, but it is possible. So you start with the Accuracy Cheese, then you apply Toxic and Leech Seed. The thing is that Mewtwo will rest, and resting stops the combo from going off, it resets the Toxic counter. However, Rentacruel on your team actually does have Toxic, so once Mewtwo wakes up, you can Toxic it, which restarts the instant death, and Tentacruel's special is so good that it can actually survive a super effective Psychic from Mewtwo, which is kind of crazy. And then you can give him the loving tentacle embrace, and then it's over. Because Mewtwo is a single character, so he can't actually switch out. It's going to be stuck. And then once it's in your loving tendrils, that's it. It's not instant death, but Mewtwo can't actually interact at that point, so it's basically death. You just have to wait a little while. Professor Oak was right when he said to use your Master Ball on a Tentacruel, it's true, we should put that image in the premium. After further research from the YTC Institute, we have determined there is a very reliable, completely non-meme way to one-shot Mewtwo using Onyx! I'm dead serious. So what you do is you paralyze Mewtwo with a fast Thunder Waver like Electrode, you start screeching. You can screech with Rentacruel or Persian, get three screeches. And then, you can use either Execute or you can use Onyx. They're the only two that have self-destruct. You send one of those out, and then uh, become Death, Destroyer of Worlds? Why pay to go see Oppenheimer when you can have your own home screening? At that point, self-destruct is a 1-8 KO. And Mewtwo has no counterplay because it's slower, and it doesn't know to heal up because it's at full health. Actual non-meme viable Onyx strat. <laughs> Please subscribe. Now we've given you the knowledge, but the execution is up to you. You're the only one that can conquer the stadium, but just know that myself and the lab men here at the YTC Institute, we're on your team. Encore's in Gen 2, but we're using it right now for you. Good luck. Don't get wrapped.